Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And here we are again with uh, more Space Knight stuff, but this is it. This is the final episode that we're gonna talk about uh, because we we kind of went over everything. I mean, I was surprised. The Black Vortex and all that Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, there was just very little Venom in it. So there was just no character development, no growth really for the character. Just a couple moments where he beat someone up. And that's all we really got out of those stories and the scene where he teamed up with Groot and stuff like that. So there wasn't a lot of meat there. So I was able to get through this faster than I probably normally would have if there was actual meat to that story. Uh, but there weren't you know, meat to any of those Bendis stories, uh, which is a bummer because Bendis is the one that set up this Space Knight stuff and, uh, and then kind of just like walked away from it. Uh, but luckily, Robbie Thompson picked up the, the, the baton and, uh, and kept it going. The first six issues I thought were pretty good, but I was kind of middle of the road on them. The, the four issues that we just talked about in the last episode, I thought were stronger. But these three, uh, the books that we're going to talk about in this one, the three issues, uh, issues 11, 12, and 13, these are the last three issues of this series. And these kind of wrap up the run in general and uh, and really bring a nice conclusion to all this stuff. I mean, unfortunately, they don't ever find out what happened to Mercurio, you know, that guy who you know fought you know, Venom in the first six issues. There's no real wrap up there. But in these three issues, you do get a nice closure with Venom's team, uh, you know, like the, the Space Knight team, like the, the people who's running around with 803 um, and Pick and Hilla and Ika and now Tarna. Um, we're going to get a nice conclusion to their arc and, and know that they're still out there somewhere in the universe, which is great. Um, it's a shame. All these characters that were created who I kind of like, none of them showed up to Flash's funeral. <laughs> Like that would have that would have been really cool to see a scene where uh, you see Flash's funeral and you have all of them and you have Valkyrie and you know all these people that Flash kind of you know worked with in his last few years maybe even Punisher was there you know I mean he worked with the Thunderbolts he was a like, Thunderbolts he was Guardians of the Galaxy um, he was in a Secret Avenger like they just put Flash Thompson everywhere um, and uh, but I like that his run kind of wraps up with this nice quiet personal story. That also involves Spider-Man. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, so, yes, yeah, so um, Her Gerardo Sandoval is the artist of these three issues, and Robbie Thompson is the writer, of course. And uh, these, I think, are the three best issues of this whole series. And uh, Sandoval, as we know, will leave this book at the end of this uh, trade. They actually tease Venom number one, you know, coming out in a few months uh, by Gerardo Sandoval and, uh, and also uh, Mike Costa. So this is the precursor to the Mike Costa run. So we're... And, and that's where we started this show way back a couple years ago. We started by wrapping up the Mike Costa run. So once we get there, we only got a couple trades and we'll have covered pretty much everything in the universe of Venom for the 616 universe uh, and the Ultimate Universe. We'll have covered all that lore. Um, I just I can't believe it. It's been a long road, right? 600 plus episodes now. Uh, it's been a long road and I appreciate you guys being here with me. Uh, so this one, you know, we'll take our time a little bit with this one because uh, there's enough to sink my teeth into here, uh, but because it, it's a very personal story. And you know me, I, that's how I like my Venom stuff. I like very small street level personal stories. And after all the stuff he just went through in space and with the Guardians of the Galaxy and being a secret Avenger and a Thunderbolt and all these other things, it comes down to these three issues where Flash is back in New York and he's looking around for... Um, for Andy, you know, he's like, all right, I, you know, I heard she was, she might be in Philadelphia. She might've made her way to uh, New York. So I'm, I'm here to help her. And so he's looking for her. Meanwhile, his team of, you know, Ika, Tarna and all of them, they're on this planet called Wemb, uh, W-E-N-B. And uh, they're like 6 million light years away from Earth. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's, they're out there looking for like some, something that could help with the curing of Andy. Um, and, uh, and so they're off work looking at that MacGuffin. And meanwhile, the first thing Flash does when he comes back, uh, you know, takes a break from looking for Andy to go see his mom. Um, and I really love that. I thought that was really great that he got to get, get that scene. Remember, he said his fear was that he wouldn't get to say goodbye to his mom being out in space doing all this space night stuff. Now that he's home, he's like, I want to go see her. And he does. And they forgive each other and they have a great moment. And I was like, that is awesome. Like, so Robbie, thanks for giving us that human moment in there uh, mixed in with this like uh, crazy story that is about to happen. Cause now that he, he's like, all right, I said, you know, said hi to my mom and I got that moment with her. Uh, I'm going to go look for Andy again. And as he goes out there, Spider-Man shows up and traps Venom. And as we know now, 
last time they met, uh, you know, it was Superior Spider-Man. And so it was Dr. Octopus inside uh, Spider-Man's body fighting Flash Thompson when we covered the Superior Venom storyline. So now he's like, which one are you? Who's, who is this? And he's like, it's me. It's my old pet. I'm your friend. He's like, hey, you're Flash Thompson under there, right? And he's, and you know, Venom's like, oh, you remember me now? And he goes, yeah, well, look, the last time we fought, you know, I, I wasn't myself, <laughs> you know? Uh, and he, so he goes, but I'm prepared to fight you today because we need to figure out what's going on. He's like, and uh, and so, he, and I guess Spider-Man's been hearing about different attacks and obviously Venom showed up during Civil War too. So Spider-Man's like, I just wanna put you down for a second and so we can have a conversation. So Spider-Man's ready to fight. He actually shows up and his like gloves are heated. So when he punches Venom, that it like hurts the symbiote uh, and that it, it cuts to, you know, Parker Industries and shows Peter developing those gloves, you know. Um, so I like that because that was very, that was something Superior Spider-Man did, but also Peter Parker did when he got back into his body and had to take over his own company that Dr. Octopus created while Peter Parker was, you know, while his mind was away from his body. Um so, but they get into a brutal fight. So what I like is that Robbie does not skimp on the fight here. This fight goes for four or five pages, like just Spider-Man and Venom just going at it, punching each other, ripping each other's masks. I think at one point Spider-Man just yells the word stop, but in his suit, he built in something that would uh, like elevate his voice to make it like a sonic scream. So uh, he goes, stop, and the suit gets, you know, gets pulled off of Flash. Um, so again, like Spider-Man was ready to fight. And then once the suit goes back on him, Spider-Man punches him right in the jaw, just old school style, breaking that jaw, dude. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a really good fight. But then at the end, the symbiote is like, all right, I can't take this anymore. It leaves Flash and covers Spider-Man. And it's like, welcome home, Spider-Man. And he's like, no. And that's how issue 11 ends. But issue 12 picks up where the suit is showing Peter uh, and Spider-Man it's showing him what they've been through. It's like, look, I've been cleansed. I was brought back to Clintar. I can't remember everything. I can't really remember you too well. I, I remember we were bonded, but I don't really remember the details. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to dip into who you are under that mask. Like, I'm trying to be respectful. Like, I'm a different being now, and I was cleansed, but not fully. And we're back here on Earth. Uh, really, we came back not really so much for the Civil War stuff, but to use that as a way to get to Earth so then we can go help our friend Andy. Uh, who needs us. She's a young girl who has a hell mark, but she's also wearing that clone symbiote that you fought all those years ago. So it basically just covered and bonded with Spider-Man just to show him the memories. And that's what I love that, you know, like I, I always say like that's one power that they don't really utilize a lot of is the memory thing that the symbiote can do. It can transfer memories. It tra it actually, there it has memories from its previous bloodline, like, and they, they transfer down. And then so like, like I said, when Peter Parker refused the suit and it left him way back in Spider-Man 300 or 299, and then in 300 it bonded with Eddie Brock, Eddie Brock instantly knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man because the suit brought all those memories with it right to Venom. Uh, so I've always liked that, and I like that they use that here. So again, major kudos to Robbie for using that as a, a way to explain things, because normally you want scenes where characters talk things out you know, and uh, and and the suit was very frustrated with Spider-Man in the last issue. Like, stop punching me. I just want to talk. So when it does this to kind of explain everything to him, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. So uh, so now that Spider-Man is caught up, um, then these uh, agents show up. These space knights show up. Um, or no, the, yeah, I don't know if they're space knights. These beings show up that are like super powered and, uh, and they're ready. They want to fight uh, Venom and they want to take him down because they're after Andy. Um, and so... Spider-Man and Venom web them up real quickly and then like, all right, tell us where Andy is. And they're like, well, we've been tracking her. She's been sticking to the sewers mostly. And Spider-Man's like, okay, that's all I needed. And he knocks the dude out. And then he goes and gets another replacement mask because his mask got torn. And he grabs his container uh, that can hold a symbiote. And he says, all right, Flash, let's go find your friend Andy and let's set up a trap for her. And we're going to trap your Clintar and her Clintar together. And then hopefully your team will show back up from outer space and bring whatever they need to bring and we can help cure Andy. Um, so meanwhile, the team is out in space and they run into some space knights. So like I said, there's the agents of the cosmos. That's what Venom was called at the beginning of the book. Um, and now there's actual space knights who don't really answer to anyone, but they go out there and protect and serve anyway. Uh, so I'm just like, well, if the book was called Space Knight, why didn't, why wasn't he just one of these people and not one of the agents of the cosmos? Uh, but whatever. So, but Tarna ends up joining that group. But, um, but meanwhile, back on Earth, like as the team is working up there and they fight uh, the space knights. So we have Ika, you know, Ika and um, 
and Tarna and, and Pick and Hela and 803, the Flash's team, they're battling the Space Knights, but then eventually they come to a truce and they explain what's going on. And they're like, oh, we, we got to get to Earth immediately. So they decide to work together and they go to Earth. And uh, meanwhile on Earth, Andy is fighting Venom and she's beating the living crap out of him in the sewer, but he won't fight back. And she's like, fight back, dang it, fight back. And he's like, no. And he goes, uh, he goes, I'm just stalling. And she's like, stalling. And then Spider-Man shows up, springs his trap, electrocutes the two of them and separates their symbiotes and captures their symbiotes. Um, but then when he brings it back to his lab, they're like, uh, well, the symbiote, was it afraid of ant? Uh, well, what, what was it afraid of? Like, why is there so much fear in the symbiote? Now that it's separated, it's being cleansed slowly by your symbiote. But what's going on? Like, what you know, what's uh, why is it still afraid? And it's like, well, it's still afraid of Andy. And so they turn around and Andy's standing there with the hell mark, like burning on her forehead. And she's got, she's summoning demons. <laughs> uh, so the final issue, issue 13 here, uh, same writer, same artist, uh, Sandoval uh, on art. And then uh, Robbie, obviously, Thompson on, uh, on the writing, obviously. Um, and so we have Philadelphia before. And we have, uh, it starts off, that's where the book is, where they're in Philadelphia. This is before Flash Thompson went into space. And he's talking to Andy about, um, you know, that he has to make this trip and he has to go. And that he, you know, he's, uh, but he doesn't, I don't know, I guess he's not very good at explaining that he's, uh, you know, that he's going to be sad that he has to leave her. Um, and he just kind of leaves. And, uh, and you know, I mean, I, not a, he doesn't give her an Irish goodbye. He's kind of saying goodbye, but not very well. So now it cuts back to present day in Philadelphia at the Parker Industries branch in Philadelphia. And uh, and now Andy's Hellmark, which was on her forehead in the last issue, is now on her chest. It's always supposed to be on her chest, I think. Uh, but uh, but for some reason, the, the art showed it on her forehead in the last issue. Maybe that was a note that they got was, hey, don't do that. Put it on her chest next time. Um, but either way, Andy is now gone, you know, super villain and she's summoning demons. Uh, but luckily, just in time, Flash, as he's getting his butt kicked by Andy, um, his team from space show up along with the Space Knights. And they come down and um, and help Flash, you know, stop Andy. Uh, but as they distract Andy, Flash goes over, grabs her, tackles her, and then injects her with, uh, you know, this fluid that was brought to him by the teams. Uh, and that kind of brings her down and it helps her get control over the symbiote. And it kind of puts a temporary damper on the Hellmark for now. And she's like, you know, it's not going to help. The Hellmark will come back. And, and Flash is like, I know it will, but this time I won't leave you. I'll be here with you and we'll figure it out together. Um, you know, and, and hopefully you trust me. And she's like, I do. So then there you go. He got the teacher and his student are now back together as friends. And he, she's kind of his protege. So, you know, um, so he can keep an eye on her now. And then so at the book ends with Flash saying goodbye to his team. And his team's like Tarna says, look, I, I, I'm not going to rebond with my symbiote. Hopefully it heals and it goes off on its own path and everything. And I'm going to go join the Space Knights and become my own person too. Um, and so Flash is like, okay, that sounds great. And then his team, uh, Pick and Hilla and Ika, they're all, you know, leaving too. They're like, all right, we're going to go with the Space Knights as well and just get dropped off on wherever we need home planets and stuff. Um, and Ika is, you know, kisses Flash and goes, but don't worry if you ever want to come back into space and marry me, like you, you still have a spot in my husband's stable. <laughs> and he's like, uh, thank you, uh, I guess. Um, but then there's a really tender moment with 803, when 803 goes up and says, you know, you you promised to destroy me. And Flash is like, yeah, look, that's just a promise I'm not going to keep. And he goes, but what do I do? Like, I don't, I don't want to, I'm a servant. I'm your servant. And I was a servant to Keo before you and a servant to someone else before that. Like, I, I just don't want to live a life of servitude. I want to die. And Flash goes, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you go be free? Like, why don't you just be free and not be a servant? And, uh, and then he hugs, you know, they hug each other. And I was like, Ugh. I love 803. I think he's one of my favorite characters in this run. Um, I liked Ika, though, and uh, uh, Tarna I ended up liking, and Pick and Hila I liked. So I think Robbie did a great job creating a supporting cast for Flash in this run, um, so much so that I would rather Flash have hung out with these guys where he actually did stuff that propelled the stories and so did they, as opposed to Bendis writing Flash on the Guardians of the Galaxy where he barely did anything. Um, I thought that was a waste of time, and this I would have liked to seen another 10 issues of these guys hanging out together. So now that Flash is back in the comics, hopefully they 
do something with these characters and Flash can reunite with them at least one more time. It would be awesome. Because, um, yeah, I like these characters. I really like them. And that, that Momo 803 was, was great. Um, so the book ends and it has Flash uh, with Andy. And he's like, uh, well, we're, you know, I'll keep an eye on you. I'm here. We'll, I'll try to train you. We'll go back out. We'll just hit the streets, you know, uh, save people, do what we used to do. Um, he goes, I'm, I'm here for the long haul and I'm here to keep an eye on you, kid. And she's like, um, yeah, that's great. And she goes, but I don't really like this Space Knight look that you have. Do you think you could go back to your old costume? And he's like, sure. So that's what he does. So the last page is him going, anything for you, kid. And he's as Agent Venom again. And him and Mania swing off into the night to like go help people. So uh, that was freaking awesome. I, I really dug it. I thought that was a really well done storyline. And I think that's the best three issues of this run completely. Um, I'm so glad the book ended like this because when I saw the two trades of Space Knight Volume 1 and 2, it just shows Ariel, Oliva, uh, Ariel Olivetti, sorry, uh, his, uh, his artwork on the both covers, and it just looked like all of it took place in space. Um, and I never gave the book a chance. And uh, now here I have, reading it all, him coming back to Earth is just the best part of this series. And I think Robbie Thompson really stuck the landing, in my opinion. I thought the book started off meh, got a little bit better with the second arc when they started hinting that they were going to come back to Earth. And then after Civil War brought uh, Flash back to Earth, it's been it's all uphill from there. So the issues 11, 12, and 13, I think, are very vital to read. For um, for those of you out there who collect Andy Benton stuff and you know and everything, um, definitely pick up those three issues if you can find them, or just pick up the trade of this um, with uh, issues uh, seven through thirteen in it. It's worth it, if not for nothing else, but these last three um, last three issues for sure. But before we end this, uh, there's actually a little bit more because obviously when this end uh, when this ended when this book came out, the next time we saw Venom was a couple months after this book ended. And it was uh, the Mike Costa run starting up with a new issue one of Venom, just called Venom, no Space Knight, no nothing else. Uh, and it had a new, he had a new host, Lee Price, a new character that was created uh, in that run. And uh, not, not a lot of people are a fan of Lee Price. <laughs> and luckily we can talk about most of the Lee Price story in one episode because it was just the first six issues of the new Venom story. And then he comes back later in, in Venom Incorporated. Um, but uh, so there's not a lot to Lee Price, thankfully, because he's not a very interesting character. I mean, he's okay, but he's not, you know, not, he's no one's favorite. Um, but uh, unless he's yours, let me know if he's your favorite for some reason. Uh, but uh, but when Venom 1 came out, that's when I got back into Venom. I, I was like, oh, okay, it doesn't have a Space Knight thing. He's not an agent or whatever. Like it, it's, and it's, you know, a new starting point. I'll check it out. So v Venom number one is actually when I got back into Venom comics and a lot of this and the Agent Venom stuff is in Guardians of the Galaxy and Thunderbolts and all that. I missed a lot of that stuff. I, that was my years of not reading Venom. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting to the Mike Costa stuff because I thought that run got better as it went along too. Uh, but before we get into that proper, we do have to jump ahead. Uh, so when the new series starts by Mike Costa, Venom number one, after Venom number six comes out, they revert back to their original legacy numbering, which doesn't make any sense for Venom because he had mostly miniseries. Uh, so it's silly to do that, but they did it anyway. So after issue six of Venom, there was issue 150 of Venom. And in one issue 150 of Venom, there's this story here, which is uh, basically Robbie Thompson coming back with Sandoval to tell the story of how Flash Thompson lost the suit. Because when you read Venom number one, you don't really know how he lost the suit. It just, the suit's no longer with Flash. It's wandering around and it ends up on Lee Price. And you're kind of like, how the heck did this happen? So they luckily gave Robbie Thompson a chance to come back and give him like eight pages to tell that story. So that's what we're going to talk about here to wrap this up. So this is from issue uh, 150 of Venom, which is from the Mike Costa run, but we're not going to talk about the full issue, just this short story in the back by Robbie Thompson. So uh, this says it takes place, you know, right around the time this book ended. And uh, and it's Flash and Mania cleaning up the city, cleaning up the streets of Philadelphia and taking down criminals and fighting demons and having pizza. I think at one point they go to New York and have pizza. And she's like, okay, New York pizza is actually pretty good. You know, and he's like, all right. He's like, well, now we'll go back to Philadelphia and you can, you know, show me one of your favorite pl uh, pizza places in Philadelphia. And he goes, uh, but let's call it a night. So she's like, okay. And she, you know, leaves and, and flashes all by himself on this rooftop. And then he goes, um, I know you're there. He's like, thanks for waiting for the kid to leave. And then the person goes, I was actually hoping to 
take the kid down with you. He's like, uh, but I'll, I'll you know, better to divide and conquer. So I'm going to start with you. So Flash turns around, turns into full on Venom uh, and fights this guy in this armor suit. And the two of them go at it. And this guy in the armor suit actually uses a sonic uh, wave that has slightly different effects of it. It doesn't look like a typical sonic wave. And it rips that costume, the Venom costume, right off of Flash. Separates them completely. So Flash is standing there with his um, prosthetic legs on, and he's like looking at uh, the symbiote, and he's like, "Come back to me, buddy." He's like, uh, "Like, let's take this guy down." And the suit is screaming, and it's touching its head, and it's like wailing, and then it just stops and turns at Flash and growls at him. Um, its anger, for whatever reason, has returned, and it just goes off. And then so the book, uh, this st short story, starts wrapping up with Flash. Going back, he's like looking for the suit. He's going through the sewers. He's going to different stores, walking down alleys, trying to find the suit. And when after he, a couple of weeks of not being able to find it, he goes to like an AA meeting and is like, you know, going back to that and talking to to the people there, saying like, you know, I hope my friend is okay. I lost a friend, a dear friend recently, um, and it's kind of made me want to drink. So I want to come back here and, and talk it out so I can fight that urge. And so he's struggling from that. And then meanwhile, you cut to the suit. And the suit is wandering through, you know, different sewers, I guess, than the ones that Flash checked and different rooftops and alleys. And it's going insane. It's like it's ha it's torn emotionally. It's feeling anger and confusion and disappointment. So whatever that thing was that hit him, that blast, it, it really messed him up. Um, so then at the end of the book, he sees like a homeless guy and he goes and bonds with the homeless guy so that it could survive because, you know, obviously... A certain time without a host it'll it'll weaken and that's what it was doing and then it was like no i gotta survive you know i don't want to die so it goes and bonds with this homeless guy and that's where the this story ends and the story is called dependence day and like i said it's by robbie thompson and sandoval who does the artwork um and so yeah so that basically is what's going to lead into the the lee price stuff and we'll get there eventually like i'm not in a rush to get there because once we finish the lee price run there's only like four trade paperbacks that we got to cover because we already did the nativity and a couple other Mike Costa stories already. So we really only have like the first three or four trades that we got to talk about. And then we'll have covered all Venom books. Um, so I'm not in a rush to get there because what I want to do is I want to finish the few Carnage stories that we have left to talk about. Uh, I want to try to get those done either by the end of this month in May or early June if I can. Um, and then in July, I want to spend the whole month of July just focusing on movie news uh, if we get any and also the time Peter Parker was in the black costume. So that's my plans for those months there for June and July. And then uh, and then maybe in August or something, we'll get to the Lee Price stuff um, and then wrap that up probably pretty quickly. That way we can just focus on Extreme Carnage and any new books that come out this summer that'll lead us into the next film. And then after that, we'll probably just, maybe I'll do a couple alternate universe Venom stories from other universes. And I know I want to do Spider-Gwen or Gwenum coming up very soon. So we'll we'll get into that stuff. But, uh, but ultimately, I think sticking with the 616 universe and then a few other like side things is all we're going to do. I, I don't think we're going to cover every single Venom and Carnage story, but at least we got all the main ones of the main universe. Um, but who knows? Never say never, right? Maybe one day we'll get to that stuff. Uh, but for now, I'm just glad we finished with Space Night Week, and now we have the suit back on Earth, and it is out there looking for a new host, and we will get to that story eventually, and maybe in a couple months. Uh, but for now, uh, just keep an eye out. Um, you know, Hopefully we'll get some you know movie news soon, and then hopefully, if not though, we'll maybe I'll just push up the carnage week stuff and we'll get into that after my surgery um so we'll figure it out and then i got some toys you know that i want to talk about um so uh so you know th there might be some venom toy stuff coming up as well uh so we'll make some fun videos for those uh, but let me know what you thought of this run of this series um i like these last three issues and like i said i knew i wasn't going to be able to talk about all this in less than 15 minutes like i did most of the other videos this one i really wanted to sink my teeth into because it felt personal and it was I thought Robbie stuck the landing with the ending here. Um, I don't like how easy it was for Flash to lose his suit. I thought that was a little rushed. Uh, but when you only get eight pages to tell a story, you know, that's, you know, probably did the best he could. Um, but I like issues 11, 12, and 13 of Space Night. I thought they were awesome. But if you have a different opinion, let me know down in the comments. And as always, we'll con uh, continue our conversation down there. Yeah, it's getting late. Uh, so uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.